Yes, I'm liking this. You know when it says you're, you're going live now, you know, this is what I love. Well, welcome everybody to the Purple Sofa. This is Annie D wishing you well. Um, yes, it is purple. There you go. And of course, I hope everybody is obviously good and they're healthy, especially at a time like this. And of course, hello to everybody that's joining in right now. They're coming in uh, left, right and center. And of course, you know, if you've been looking at the creatives, why we are here this evening. Yes, we are. I am, well, we are and I am. Well, yes, I am talking to the man in black and white to sort through the gray of the law this evening. And as you know, I will be talking about the case that has hit the headlines, the arrest of Raj Kundra. Yes, the, uh, the Bollywood, uh, the husband of the Bollywood actress Shilpa Shetty, who has been arrested, of course, for allegedly, now I make this clear, allegedly creating and distributing pornographic material um, that is obviously, according to Indian law, is uh, against the law. Mm -hmm. Well, lots of revelations are coming through left, right and center. So the idea of today is to actually sift through it. That's why I am glad to be, well, welcoming Instagram willing. Uh, welcoming a senior advocate, Vikas Bauer, to the podium. And if you have seen my IGTVs before, you know he is no stranger to the purple sofa. He has graced it before when we have been talking about the suspicious circumstances of the death of Shashant Singh Rajput. Of course, he is here today. And just to familiarize yourself, well, he does advise on criminal, commercial, contract law, and much besides. He has had lots of experience uh, dealing with cases on fraud and money laundering, and he has represented a lot of high-profile cases, including Shashi Tharoor and uh, Navid uh, Kalra. So there you go. So a man in the know. So I am glad that he's here today because you never know by the end of this evening you know what you, you see how this goes sure Prochetti might just slap me with uh, um, a defamation uh, case you know with 25 crores written on there and that would be a bit unfortunate so I am glad that he is joining me and I must say hello to absolutely everybody that that you know that are coming in yeah wave wave everybody <laughs> Karen Andrikish uh, Akshin good to know that you're on hello to absolutely everybody now let's see if we can do this Yes. Oh, yes. I think we might have him on. And I am so glad that there's somebody else that's just as inept at Instagram as I am. It makes me so much, makes me feel so much better. I know that's a sad way of looking at it, but, you know, I am human. And, and, that, and I'm sure that's what Raj Kundra said as well. But uh, while uh, Vikas is joining in, uh, I'm going to have, I'm going to say hello to all of you. So Unschooling Lives, uh, The Logical Current, Hi People, um, Oh dear. Well, I've got lots of people requesting uh, lots of other interviews as well. Oh dear. But this is the one. Now, because I am sending you requests, I hope you get it. Um, it's sent successfully, so all you have to do is just press on the screen. Um, so I hope you can do that. Do let me know if there's an issue. You can actually comment at the bottom and, and I'll get it. Or you can send me a request yourself and I'll be very happy to <laughs> accept as well. So Ben Tahar, good to know that you're in. And Neil Kamar, good to know that you're in too. Oh yes, there you go. I'm going to go live. I have it to accept as well. <laughs> because I hope we connect. Oh dear. But it is one of those evenings. It is very rainy. Oh, hello. Hello. Welcome once again, Vikas. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, hello. Good evening to you. Uh, oh. Thanks for inviting me once again. No, it's an absolute pleasure. So how is crime treating you these days? <laughs> well, uh, you know, we're going some difficult period. Uh, the country is facing pandemic and uh, the courts are not functioning uh, physically. Yeah. We yeah. have only, you know, hearing through video conferencing. So yeah. It's uh, top, top cities, Delhi, Bombay, Madras, Calcutta. Yeah. They are actually working full time. But oh. uh, most of the oh. places have uh, information technology available or, you know, the, the IT is not there. So those courts are facing, you know, real problems. Yeah. Actually, actually, it's opening up. I think some courts have opened up physically. Some are hybrid. Hybrid yeah. means physical and half virtual. Yeah. The idea oh, is... Well, keep the you know criminal justice system functioning. 
Yeah, and I'm so glad that we're using it for this discussion today as well. So, you know, well, you know, thumbs up to digital digitalization. Well, yes. listen, a lot, you're no stranger to sensationalism. Let's put it this way. You've dealt a lot with and you've observed a lot of cases like this. A lot of excitement around the case of Raj Kundra, as you know. And um, that, one question, Vikas, one question. If Raj Kundra came to you today and said, you know what, uh, because, you know, I love what you do. I love the way that you dealt with uh, Shashi Tharoor's case. Uh, defend me. What would you say? Well, of course, I will accept. Oh, you know, we, you know the, uh, uh, we, we, we have to represent everyone. The lawyer yeah. has no no to anybody. Mm -hmm. And the, the most cardinal, uh, you know, principle of criminal jurisprudence is that every accused is innocent till he's proven guilty. Yeah. So I personally, I do not decide whether I should do a case or not unless and until my conscience say that I have to do it. But the day we start representing people on the ground that people have declared somebody guilty, we yeah. will be guilty of professional misconduct. Okay. So we don't go by this media reports. And you know, nowadays, social media wants swift justice. Yes. Yeah. On like two minutes, doodle. <laughs> And a uh, you know pizza that uh, the <laughs> happened today, and within 24 hours you declare someone guilty. That is not proper. That's not proper. It takes his own time. Every accused has a right, constitutional right, to have a fair trial and fair yeah. investigation. So well, so no someone yeah, uh, absolutely, I agree. And and I just have to make clear to everybody, everybody who's listening today, there were there is no there is no side, there is no take. We're making no judgment on this on this case. It is just a simple discussion. Lots of facts have come out. We're trying to sift through it. Uh, that's yeah. all there is. So the first thing, and you've talked about social media and how new news gets out really quickly and the content obviously cannot be controlled. So first of all, what I'd like to know, you know, I'm surprised to sometimes wake up in the morning and suddenly see arrests or convictions. So how did Raj, how did this case, Raj Kunda, suddenly come to light? I mean, was it a tip to the Mumbai police? Was it just by chance? Was it because they were chasing him because of the Bitcoin scam or the, the you know, match fixing scam? How did it come to light, really? Well, look, I don't have any personal knowledge, but of course, from the media reports, what we have seen is that uh, some uh, complaints were filed in February 2021 mm -hmm. by uh, some aggrieved women uh, that they are being harassed. And then a complaint was also filed, probably that some video is being recorded in a you know bungalow in Mud Island. Mm. So on of that complaint, the police got activated. They raided that bungalow and they found that some act was being performed and it was being filmed. I think right. from the entire investigation started. So from February till about now in July, they found that he's a co-conspirator and he's the person behind, you know, filming this and then circulating mm -hmm. then had an app, sold subsequently. These are all, you know, matter of investigation, which is going yes. on. But it started in February, according to my knowledge. Right. So, you know what? I, I just want to ask you very, you know, very, I, it's very directly. This is a layman asking, okay? So I don't have much knowledge of the law. And this is why you're here today, to give me a bit of clarity and shine the light. We're talking just, you know, adult movies. I mean, is it a big deal? Is it that serious? Or is it just a storm in a teacup? No, I think it's serious in the sense that, uh, you know, there are some things which are prohibited in law. Yeah. So we strictly go by the law in India. We have Information Technology Act. I think he's being charged under Section 67A. Mm. But they, uh, any act which is, uh, you know, uh, sexually explicit videos or an mm. act, conduct, if it is circulated, it is prohibited in law and it is punishable. Right. In law. So, right. okay. Anyway, that is different. But yes, what is actually prohibited is, is exploitation. If there's an exploitation of women, mm. if there is involved or children involved, then we have a statute for children. All that is a very, very serious matter. But yes, if somebody is doing it willingly and somebody is watching porn in his private space, it's not prohibited in law. Supreme Court has said that. So right. watching a privately is not an offense. But if you exploit someone, particularly a child, it's a very serious matter. And if you exploit a lady, so you know why I think Section 420 is also invoked in this case that mm. you a lady, 
you promise her that she will be you know given a role in a web series and for that she has to do a particular act is also like uh, like an exploitation so uh, and if ultimately the web series is not given yeah act is performed it amounts to cheating so there are various provisions in the indian penal code so in case all that is true then of course he will be charged with it but of course you know there's a lot of sensational yes. activity there are there are a lot of you know discussion tv room discussions which happen where they prove that he is guilty ultimately it has to be investigated whether he had actually any role or not that's a matter of investigation so let's just get a, get a, get a bit of clarity now there are articles upon articles numbers upon numbers you know of the sections that have been you know he's been hit with what are they actually what are the list of uh, cases against him though or what he's been accused of what are the multiple ones so because we talked that they were the, the main ones that we've talked about are just the creation of adult movies but as you said watching it is not a crime um but you said exploitation is an issue if somebody's been forced or some sort of you know a gun to their head or something like that so what's the, actually the long list of accusations that we are looking at right here right now i think what we have learned from uh, from the open source is that there is a there's an offense of cheating that means there is an aggrieved party right. who has a complaint and who says that uh, i was promised so and so so and so and i was forced to do this i did it ultimately i didn't get it so therefore i have been cheated this is one allegation second is circulating obscene stuff digitally as well as otherwise is an offense under indian penal code so section 292 293 mm-hmm. have booked and third is the information technology act because this is all on technology this is all on phone maximum porn which is watched watched in the entire world 70 80% is on the phone mm. so the digital technology which is used so that act has also been invoked and then i think uh, you know with regard to representation of women there is an act that has also been invoked here so ipc it act conspiracy and common intention and then uh, the misrepresentation of women you know how mm-hmm. how exploited how... there is a special statute for that that has also been invoked so these are multiple provisions which are being investigated by the police so which one would you say is in the line of them which one would you say is probably the most serious and the one that could really put him behind bars for a long time if I he's proven guilty 67a is punishable for 5 years these are all punishable for 3 years 5 years yeah. if he has committed for the second time second act amounts to 7 years so these are it's maximum the, the most aggravated form is up to 7 years right okay okay fair enough right so then uh, this is it so in your line of work well in your line of work in your experience how many cases have the police how how many have they been able to convict how effective are they in bringing in in bringing people uh you know to the podium and convicting them on something like this oh uh, well that's a serious problem you know in our country unfortunately we have a very low conviction rate right and primary reason is false implication and then second reason is that it takes such a long period of time that if a trial takes 10 years 15 years 20 years by that time the evidence is either disappeared destroyed the witnesses mm. turn hostile so evidence is not available you call the witness in the court he comes sometimes the judge is not there or sometimes lawyer is not there so our process the trial process is a very tedious process mm. so what to do is we need to simplify that we need to start using technology we we hardly use technology in our criminal trial so that slow moving criminal trial results into very low conviction rate so i right. tell you the data in how many cases like obscenity or pornography we have conviction we don't have any data we may have right. a data some very serious statutes like with regard to children we have a statute there of course the data is prepared we can give you that data but again there again the uh, there are a lot of false implication there is a great misuse of various provisions of law in our country like for instance rape cases yeah now rape cases became very very stringent the the provisions became very very stringent after nirbhaya case yeah. but at the same time the gross misuse also rose lot of false cases are filed lot of honey traps are being done so what we need to do is simplify our criminal justice system only then we are able to get better conviction rates 
so i'm sorry i will not be able to give you the data yeah. with identity and pond cases it's very very difficult but yes it is low i can make a statement with conviction that our conviction rate is low right okay so you mean to say one mistake and it can throw the case out is that what we're saying as well no no i'm not saying that I'm okay it's going to take time okay so, on time there will be multiple accused they have different roles to play these roles have to be scrutinized identified right. prepared in a form of a charge sheet or a complaint filed in the court then the court has a look at it there are various stages scrutinies happen so it's the process which takes time right so now if you know we're talking about this we're talking about the process now raj kundra has stated that he wasn't given notice before he was raided now as long as far as the law goes um are we is the law in the right is there a bit of a gray area there what's the case there no oh, no no i don't think i don't think that is the right point they have taken in the court raids are always happen without any information the moment right. you get when accused that i am coming to your office or to your house and i would like to raid he will remove the evidence right so this that's the law the raids more often are always uh, without any notice they don't mm -hmm. have to tell that we are coming to your house and raiding the premises otherwise the whole purpose gets frustrated so uh, there i think uh, he he is not correct but of course he, his lawyer has every right to take a stand in the court but legally speaking mm -hmm. they have search warrant from the court idea is that police will satisfy the magistrate that i have to go to mr kundra's house this yeah. is the reason evidence i have please give me permission so if magistrate gives the permission he has a right the police has a right to go to their house and raid that's right. the law i'm not okay. just, uh, you know specific to this case i'm just telling you the general law right because his lawyer was quite adamant and he seemed to be quite adamant when i read that article that you know he i wasn't given notice and it's not allowed so that was a bit of the confusion that we had then of course as you know you know lots of stuff coming out he applied for bail it was refused on what basis is uh, what basis because from, from what i could read uh, what i have read you know in in various articles that if they released him on bail he could tamper with some evidence or he could bully a witness now is that a valid reason to refuse bail well i i i have my personal view which i can share with you on bail because we argue this day in and day out uh, you know our bail laws have to be liberalized unfortunately what what's happening nowadays is that achieving bail in the court is like achieving an acquittal of a case and um, look i remember in you know in, in 70s we have justice krishna here who said that bail is a rule and jail is an exception 1970 right. it's almost 40 years today and nobody follows that so today taking bail is very very difficult but this is the case where of course the punishment is less than 7 years so the mm. category it is not in a grievous uh, you know case this is a case where the law itself says be liberal in bail and whenever the punishment of an offense is less than 7 years the law is don't arrest unless and until it is imperative today they arrest because of cosmetic reasons they feel they have a power so they should exercise so i personally don't believe in arrest particularly in cases which are less than 7 years where unless and until there are compelling reasons compelling reasons are what that he is going to destroy the evidence mm -hmm. if the bombay police has evidence to suggest that he has destroyed like there was probably some some article somewhere that lot of movies which were there on the server were removed were destroyed mm -hmm. so therefore that is the apprehension which they have in their mind that if he is granted bail at this point of time probably if he has knowledge about those servers he has the password of those servers he can go and destroy mm. but the, the 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 police has to justify police has right. to show that he is capable of or he has done tampering of evidence otherwise these are cases where i think bail should be granted uh, the, the the court should be liberal in granting right. bail Yes. Okay, because he has because nobody's proven anything yet. I didn't see anything come out, um, and yet they still refuse. But having said that, I think from uh, uh, I think I think one o'clock today. I think uh, was the court still in his. So was the court 
uh, still reviewing his his bail request. Sorry, I got a bit of a pause there. The application heard. Uh, one one point which was very attractive, which I read, you know, somewhere in the paper, is that uh, his counsel says that if you want to invoke Information Technology Act against me, which says that sexually explicit act or conduct is prohibited, please have a look at those videos. They are not. Mm. So at the end of the day, somebody has to see those videos. They are mm. saying that on it may be an adult movie, it may be a small adult movie. But it is not porn. It's not pornography. So somebody has to see and apply his mind and then say whether it violates the law or not. That well, I the court should do. Right. So this is the bigger question, isn't it? Has Raj Kundra violated the law? Um, and what is then the definition of obscenity according to his videos? Has he, has he violated? What are they saying? What is the definition then? You know, in India, the definition is very, very generic. Because, you know, every, any, you go anywhere in the world, the, uh, the, the standard of morality and decency are different, right? In India, the standard may be different. In England, it may be different. And in Italy and France, it may be different. So obscenity is anything which is offensive or disgusting by accepted standard of morality and decency. So what is accepted? Right. Morality and decency is not defined anywhere. So it depends from person to person. Something may be obscene to me, but may not be to you. Or something may be obscene to you, may not be to me. There is no standard formula or straitjacket formula to say this is obscene, this is not obscene. It depends from society to society. If the society is progressive, right? If the society uh, is contemporary, they may not find yeah. it obscene. So therefore, it depends from case to case. But you yeah, have to... Yeah. That something is obscene or not. Yeah. Right, so this, this is the interesting part, isn't it? Um, layman's term. So we still have, this is what I don't understand. He was arrested, yet we still haven't defined whether he were, his movies were obscene. Then it may, and then after your talk, so if the, the Indian Penal Codes, these 292, 293, and 294, if they are, the premise of this is to uphold the moral fabric of society, and obviously take into account what you've said, then what are the laws that govern the OTT platform? Because as soon as you, you click on anything, we are seeing, you know, as far as anyone, anyone would really define, any layman, we are seeing scenes, obscene scenes, nude scenes, day in, day out. So what are the laws that govern that? Because I don't see anyone arrested for that. I know. No, let me just explain it to you. OTT platforms are on a different set altogether because OTT platform is for personal viewing, personal viewing. Now it is not a cinematograph film which is being you know displayed for public at large. It is not a cinema hall. For OTT you have to uh, subscribe to it, you have to pay for it and you can watch it in your bedroom. You can watch it in your own house. So therefore as of now we don't have law on OTT but government has framed certain regulations I think in February 2021, they wanted to regulate it, but a lot of petitions were filed in various courts and also in the Supreme Court. Supreme Court has stayed those regulations as of now. They don't want that they should regulation as far as OTT platform is concerned. Otherwise, it will somehow curtail the creativity. But that is OTT is for a personal viewing. So what, what is regulated under the Cinematograph Act and many other laws is something which is for public exhibition. Like a film, you need a certificate under Section 5 of Cinematograph Act. If there is uh, a theater, then you have to take the license. Mm. And of course, you need a certificate, whether it's a U certificate or it's an A certificate. So as far as OTT is concerned, as of now in our country, it's not regulated at all. That's why you could see a lot of explicit sexually oriented scenes, which are there, mm. which are not so something has to be done. If you really want to control it or regulate it, you have to regulate that content also. Otherwise, hmm. uh, the, the, the content of Mr. Kundra's, uh, you know, so-called films, but if you compare them with what you have on ETT, which you are permitting openly, yeah. there is no regulation, then this arrest is completely unjustifiable. Because exactly. It, yes, so, so, so I in fact agree with you, the, the lawyer should compare the video with the OTT, because OTT is openly everybody, everybody on the road, 
has a mobile phone which is like a television you open you watch a movie on the netflix there is no control you can watch anything you can watch a very close to porn i'm not saying it, th- those are porn movies but very close to porn we all know yeah. what what ott content is yeah absolutely so this is this is why there were just so many inconsistencies in this for me that i couldn't help but question it um and so for me like you said you know the the uh, the ott is for personal viewing and for me you know maybe i am maybe an experience in this but as far as i know the app also you have to subscribe to and it is for your own viewing so i i really can't see much of a difference uh if you ask me and to be honest the ott platform i'm likely to call a friend and a few friends and say you know let's watch this movie over a pizza so it suddenly becomes public and i'm a criminal so i don't know so um you know should i be arrested as well so i'll just clarify so according to the sections is is cheating that means there is someone who has been cheated there's an exploitation of a person maybe a lady in this case and also uh section 67a now 67a is not applicable to ott at the moment although the regulations which were you know framed by the government which now have been stated by the supreme court says that even the ott platform like netflix will comply with uh the rules and regulations mm. as of now they are not doing it so there is some kind of a dilemma there is a dichotomy i feel yes some clarification supreme court should step in supreme court should decide this issue otherwise lot of people will unnecessarily be harassed just like him in case his films are at par with ott then why yeah. should he be unless and until there's a case of exploitation or a child yeah. pornography these are two so, i have to repeat again and again yeah so there you go so here it's so the case of then for example if you ask me right it's the personal thing i'm making no judgment really it's just it's just me thinking logically I think his arrest was probably premature because there are inconsistencies we're not compatible because we're not putting everything on the on the same uh playing field the level of playing field so therefore the next the next point is then as you said exploitation so that makes it more serious so that's the bit that maybe won't get thrown out so have we proved because as far as I know uh the contracts were signed by the ladies none of mm. them had a gun put to their head there was an exchange um they have done movies they've received money yet now they are claiming exploitation so now what else what else can we see uh in terms of this so what's important about this case how can we prove surely it's exploitation what requirements need to be fulfilled i think that needs to be investigated of course there you know we can't rule out the possibility that a woman has come and willingly voluntarily Uh, participated in the video and took money and went away now because of the expose she has changed her stand and she says that i was exploited because there there are there are some women who have said that we were compelled to give a nude uh, audition that is what uh, you know the newspapers mm. all those statements now have to be taken with a pinch of salt they should be yeah. investigated if they are found to be false then they should be prosecuted the one problem in our country is you can raise allegation against anyone you want you can yeah. get a against anyone by making a false statement and when you lose you may lose after few years by that time the damage to that poor chap is already done but no action in our very very limited you will find only minuscule one or two percent cases where the complainants are being prosecuted for, for you know filing a false case or making a false allegation or giving a false evidence in the court so if you compare false implication and prosecution against those false implication there is a huge gap huge gap yeah so if the if if 100 cases are filed in a month against someone all those false complaint the prosecution against the complainant would be only 1 or 2% not right. your So is why was then why was uh, so uh, I think Poonam Pandey was was given bail but Sherlyn Chopra now why was she refused bail then Well I don't know her involvement whether she was only acting or she was part of the conspiracy we really don't know mm. So those unfortunately unfortunately are not in the public domain so I will not be able to make any comment to that and since it is sub- yes, it will not be appropriate for me to make a comment Yeah. but the facts are i have already given you my general opinion on bail right that bail is a rule 
particularly in cases which are punishable for less than seven years. In most of the cases, bail should be granted, unless and until there are some exceptional cases where you feel mm. that he is a threat to the society or he will tamper with the evidence. He will go and threaten someone. Those are extreme cases, or maybe someone who is a habitual offender. Mm. So there are right. people who are of crime, so then the seven-year rule will not apply. Right. Okay. Now, would you say? I mean, I, I probably would say this. I'm not sure if I would say this. Or whether it's the time that we're in, but do you feel that our Indian Penal Codes relating to this are archaic? I mean, there was a time ages before when the, I think that Pakistani writer uh, Sadat Hassan, I think Manto, was also mm. dragged into court for just using the word breasts, and and then it was just dragged out of court. Um, do you not feel that we are archaic and it really needs to be kind of brought into the modern world? Do you think there's a case for that? Do you think uh, Raj Kunder's lawyer can actually fight for this? Hundred percent, I agree with you. Indian Penal Code was framed in 1860. We are in 2021. Yeah. These were brought by Britishers. Yeah. This is a common law. So our Indian most of the offences are offences which should be decriminalised because they were Britishers who wanted Indians to be, you know, prosecuted. Take for instance the case of sedition. You make a statement, then you can be liable for sedition. The sedition law was brought by Britishers. Yeah. Even penalty law. Let me tell you, you 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 know Kama Sutra. Yeah. It was India. You go and see Khajarao. This is what what Indian art used to be. But obscenity law was brought in 1860 by the Britishers. So there are certain laws which, of course, I'm not saying that obscenity should not be gauged. Or should not be controlled. Yes, an aggravated form of obscenity. Yes, but if you are trying to harass someone, then it should not. So I personally, I can make a general statement. Yes, somebody should look into the Indian Penal Code as a whole document and see the offences which are not required. Remove it. There are some offences which should be included because society is changing. Mm. Well, it, so this is it. So this is it. So here's my question. A lot of articles seem to be concentrating on the amount of money that Raj Kundra has made through his apps. But what I can see from this and the message that I'm getting, well, you know what? There are lots of people who want all of this. They want this kind of content. So if he's making that kind of money, you've got a market out there. OK, so, so my question is to protect if you think exploitation and such like could occur, why is it that we cannot, or do you think there's potential to decriminalize this kind of content so it can be managed? Just like, for example, the way that we push for the adaptation of uh, Section 377, Sachi Tharoor, in fact, uh, fought for that. And also the way, for example, countries like Switzerland, Netherlands, Portugal have decriminalized uh, drugs for personal use. Can we not do this in this case to manage it a lot better, whether we like it or not? Porn in some way or obscenity or vulgar or erotica kind of erotica content is there to stay. There is a market. You can see it from the figures in Raj Kundra's bank. So do you think this is one way of uh, managing it? Well, I 100% I agree with you that laws have to be reviewed every decade because of the change in the society. And uh, contemporary society is different. Societies in 1670s and 80s were different. So we have to, you know, give away the laws which were there. Even the, you know, even the procedure needs to be changed. So I agree with you. Laws, if you want to go in specific, I can point out. But since we are focusing on obscenity, an aggravated form of obscenity, uh, yes, of course, 390, uh, 292, 293 should be relooked. Should be relooked. And uh, one, one, there is a vacuum which I just, you know, once since you were asking the question, it came into my mind. Mm. If court says that watching a pawn in your private space alone is legal, then at least somebody will make it. Yes. So <laughs> circulating is an offense. One question to myself. So if you're saying watching is okay, but uh, making it is an offense. So if somebody doesn't make, how will you watch? So if, if, if I have a right to liberty of watching a pawn, then somebody will make it. So therefore making, so again, the exceptions are exploitation. 
Yes. If there are instances of exploitation, please check it. Please prosecute it. Convict them in the court of law. They should be punished. But if it's being done willingly, just mm. like it was done in OTT, I think we 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 certainly need some change in the law. It should be liberalized a little bit so that we we make it compatible to the contemporary society. Right. So should we then? So yours, you're you're in, probably in favor of adapting it, modernizing it. But would you say it, it should it could be legalized, or it could? Do you think it's a bad thing if it was legalized to a particular? That's another. I, that's going further down the line. Well, I have I have very radical views on on various things. I I personally feel even prostitution, which is happening all over the country, should be regulated. Yeah. You know, legalized drugs should be legalized to a certain extent, as you rightly said, for self consumption. If it is not an addiction. Why not? You have to. We have to look for it. Before 1985, we didn't have any law on drugs. People are, you know, Rajas Maharaja used to consume a little bit of. Uh, I'm not talking about hardcore drug, but hash and other things were being consumed by our societies. It's only 1985, on the intervention of Americans, that this law was brought in our country. Now they have legalized. We are prosecuting our people. so addiction is bad so so everything has to be monitored everything has to be regulated but you know going to an extreme even in these cases so in my personal view is unwarranted and uh, you know it requires some relaxation so certainly a lot can be legalized that's yeah. not keep as of now but in case you want we can have a session purely on that <laughs> what could be legalized or liberalized we can talk about it but this right. upset It needs a change. Yeah, it needs to be reviewed. Right. So this is this, see. This is my my question that's going into my mind. So, uh, proving Raj Kundra guilty is it going to be a good thing for uh, India or society, or is it going to set a precedent for the way we see it in the future? So, to be honest, I think for the Maharashtra police, it could be uh, for the Mumbai police, it could be a feather in their cap because it's the first time maybe they could convict a high-profile case. But is it a good thing, really, in terms of what we need today? So I think that's still a bit of a, a vague area. So I, I'm not sure. But in your personal opinion, uh, as you said, we're not making a judgment. It's purely logic. Where do you think this case will go? Where do you think uh, it will eventually go? I think Mumbai police has has to cover a lot of ground as of now. It's too preliminary a stage. A lot of mm. sense has been created. but they have to show how he is personally involved they have to show whether these are porn movies or not they have to show whether there is any exploitation or not simply by getting a statement recorded very often as i told you statements are recorded by the police those statements are never yeah. signed this they are never signed by the witnesses when they come to the court after years they say sorry we have not given the statement so when you record the statement at that time only prima facie view has to be taken but when mm. it when the witness comes to the court for his examination he says sorry i never said this so so you know it's very difficult to pass a judgment at this stage it's very very difficult for me to see what will happen tomorrow it yeah. all how effective the investigation is and what kind of material they collect to implicate him so conviction is too far fetched as of now mm. not, right. not and we should not look at conviction we need to look at uh you know finding out the unvarnished truth in this matter what is the job of a cop job of a cop is not to convict people mm -hmm. job of a, a cop is to find the truth and then penalize the accused person so what they do is they arrest a the person they said he is a he is a suspect i want to arrest him so they arrest and then the en entire energy is to prove that he is an accused and then prove that he is a convict that's mm -hmm. not Job of the police officials, unfortunately, that's what I feel. So this is one one problem in the training of the cops. Every cop feels, if a complaint has been filed, somebody has been accused, I have to prove that he is an accused. That's not his job. His job is yeah. to find that complaint is true or not. So therefore, at this stage, it's very very difficult to say we should not pass any judgment. We should wait mm -hmm. for the. If they are able to file a charge sheet, then we can have a discussion. and of course since the matter is subject is you know we can have a generic discussion one mm. should avoid having discussion with regard to pending investigations
and pending trials. I personally don't like it, but we can have a generic conversation, not on right. the evidence collected by the police as of now. Right. I mean, as I say, and I reiterate again, we are making no judgment in this case. It's just literally sifting through the facts and the gray area of the law, which needs to be made clear. Uh, and, that, and that's what we're talking about today. So, you know, so obviously this, this case, this arrest of Raj Kundra has had a big fallout. Where does this put Shilpa Shetty? Now, um, is it possible that is it really, is there a likelihood that she knew nothing of this? Because she seems to be claiming that she didn't uh, directly say that I didn't know what my husband was doing. I didn't exactly know what my husband was doing or I didn't know the exact content of what he was uh, creating. Now, is that, a bit of a, is that a bit of a vague area as well? Because she's suffering a, a defamation suit and everybody. And 25 crores is a lot of money. And I'm hoping she doesn't come here and listen to this. Sorry in advance, Shul, but... If she's being defamed, she has every right to ask for money. Yeah. Being defamed, she, she makes a categorical statement that I have nothing to do with this. So we have to accept it at the face value, unless and until the police has a contrary evidence. Mm. So not on Shilpa Shetty. Onus is on the police to show that she's involved in the day-to-day -day functioning of this business. So, you know, the onus, at the end of the day, every state case, the onus is on the state. Mm. Not on the accused. accused is presumed to be innocent till he is proven guilty. Now, in this case, she says that she's not aware of it. We have to accept mm. it. Unless and until police say, no, she was there, she used to come, she has signed certain documents. If they show an involvement, of course, police has every right to move ahead. When she says it, we have to accept it at a face value, that whatever she says is correct. And it's very much possible that she may not be actually aware of the content. Mm. She's aware that some app is being, uh, or some, you know, some business is going on, etc., etc. But... Uh, I mean, I can't say anything. It's very, yeah. very. So, but, but this has made but a state accepted at a face value. But because so involvement is one thing, but defamation. So dis then that freedom of expression is another. So if yes. you're going to kind of uh, slap a lawsuit or something to me, you know, to media outlets, Facebook and Instagram does not not interfere with freedom of expression and just general discussion of the case, because I see nowhere that somebody specifically said, you know what, I think you're involved. No, I think there are some people who have made that kind of statement. That's why she has gone to the court. Now, mm -hmm. easy for, for anyone to make a statement without having an evidence in his or her hand. Before we, you know, we have to be very careful. You know, we are in a different world altogether. And one big problem in our country is that we can say whatever we want without even ascertaining the truth without even having a material in our hand, particularly the media houses, the way they have a trial, they can say whatever they want. Just one slip of paper of, you know, something which is written on, on that is flashed. And then it is taken to the next level. That, I think, should be prohibited. And mm. if she says that she's innocent, she says she was not involved, I would say we will accept, we should accept that statement unless and mm. until there is a material to rebut that. So right. if she, the extent of filing a suit of damages against someone, maybe she is certain. Otherwise, why should she file? She, you, you, you know, you need money to file those suits. Hmm. You need court fee in the court. You need to engage lawyers. You need to go to the court draft. So maybe she is very, very confident and certain about what she says. So we should accept that. Yeah. Unless so, she says something now. Well, so this is it. So a lot of our cases, though, you know, in the last few cases, and I include SSR in this, that social media digitalization, and as you said, even our, our legal practices, I mean, they've had a big impact because of digitalization. So really, are we making changes? Does, so forget, you know, this case, we need to, as you said, work on the processes. We need to actually see what the definitions are. And do we actually need to adjust the law generally now because of the technology that we are using now? No, for, for technology, we have to change the procedure. We don't because the, uh, the, the law pertaining to offenses. That should remain. We should actually induct more offenses like, like there is so much of cyber crime. There is so much of crime on technology, which we have to identify now. Hacking, for instance. 
so all those offenses now because of the introduction of technology in our life new things are happening so mm -hmm. there those new laws should be introduced and of course the laws which are outdated and obsolete they have to be removed but for technology now we must change the procedure in law mm -hmm. how the trials how the courts hear the matter all that needs to undergo a change and i am sure because we have a remarkable uh, judge who's in charge of technology in the supreme court justice chandrachud he is one of the finest we have in the country and i think he's burning his midnight oil to introduce technology in our country in the courts and he to a certain extent he's been successful till now so mm. in a different world post pandemic the courts will be in a different shape look i sit on this table where i'm sitting and i appear all over the country i can i can do supreme court i can do high court i can do district court i can do ranchi i can do bombay sitting here on my table so life has changed the only yeah. problem is that we all gain weight now Since yeah this, this is it well <laughs> see this is a good thing of technology that you only see this part and yeah. not the rest <laughs> so so basically <laughs> we have come to the conclusion that yeah. um there is still no black and white there's still a lot of gray and there may just be an overhaul of the legal system in some way or the laws these particular laws to be had before we can actually have something that is just in this case so this is what we are saying so this case could go on couldn't it for a long time is this what we're saying it could go on for some time because you know if you are uh, uh, investigating a case like this then there are multiple people look i tell you the problem area multiple people involved in recording in technology see the jurisdiction biggest problem would be the jurisdiction this app probably is originated from uk how do you do that investigation so you can do investigation happened in bombay how will you do the uploading in that part of the world the 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 sale which takes place in that part of the world money which is generated in that part of the world is all you know something which will take years yeah that is one reason why bail should be granted because if your investigation cannot be completed in 60 days in this case the outer limit is 60 days can you imagine mumbai police to conclude all jurisdictional investigation from from you know if, if there are people who are involved in that for instance people those who have uh, you know conducted that act and there are 70 odd films which have been recovered how can they even examine that in 60 days yeah absolutely Listen, Not be over. In, he will automatically get bail. If he, if investigation is not concluded in six days, he'll be let out just like that. Please come out. You are out. So, right. is it a case of this magnitude with multiple jurisdiction can be concluded in sixty days? I don't think it's possible at all. So, a quick question. He's a he's a British Asian. Does the law still apply to him in every way? Yes, yes. You know, crimes. Uh, if suppose a crime is committed in India, mm -hmm. but the accused is an indian or a foreigner the law remains the same for him but the company is also in the uk is it not if company is in uk and in their investigation in bombay they find material against the company they can prosecute the company in india so that okay. company stand trial in india even a foreigner foreign companies nowadays you know in in lot of cases of enforcement directorate you have you know multi countries you know jurisdiction where companies are made accused so they all have to come and stand trial in india right but that's okay. one delay also there are yes. cases which are pending in the courts for 10 years 20 years purely at the preliminary stage of summoning because those accused never turn up mm aha uh -huh. so this is it's a lots of lots of issues to contend with we could be here 60 days from now vikas and we could be discussing uh raj kundra being released on bail you never know so i think that's another story oh, i'm quite confident he'll be out soon <laughs> so do i so so am i actually well you know as uh, sachin says uh it's been really informative and i must thank you vikas for coming on today you've really thrown a bit of light on this and uh i it's it's cleared up a few things for me definitely and i hope it has for people that have listened in today and there've been quite a few people so i must thank you once again and you never know let's see the next bollywood case we could be chatting about it or it could be it could be season 2 for this one who knows certainly <laughs> you know enjoyed uh, the show and uh, thanks for having me over 
I, 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 I do this day in and day out. So, you know, apart from law, also we can discuss something. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I also need to thank the listeners as I, well. Happy if I discuss something other than law. Uh, uh, absolutely. Problem absolutely. they have. <laughs> Law, nothing else. <laughs> yeah, so, so nothing legal. You can't sit on the fence and you have to give me your true heartful response if it's anything yeah. else then. Oh, that, that's a promise then. So, um, you know, people, if you want to, if you missed a little bit of this, please come onto the IGTV. Go to rewind right to zero. Start watching it from beginning to end. You will be informed. You will be enlightened. If you miss it, then it will be uploaded onto my website, www. Oh, AnnieD.in. I almost forgot my own website, uh, which is a bit sad. And uh, of course, you can, if you're, if you're a, a YouTube person, then you can see Vikas once again on Annie D in conversation with Vikas Power. So all these options, you can't miss it. And no excuse to be ill-informed because there's no negligence of the law. It is not accepted as far as I'm concerned. This is what they say in England. I'm sure it's the case here as well. So thank you once again. Um, a pleasure having you on and hopefully we shall see you we'll just see you I might say soon because it means another crime that we're dealing with here so but I will see you once again thank you stay safe, oh, stay safe. you too bye-bye now bye-bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.